Chapter 3 Classroom Organization This chapter of the module covers planning for instruction in two parts. Creating a system to stay organized in case management and assigning instructional groups. In the decision-making process, these considerations fall under the Implementation section. One important component of classroom organization is to set up systems to simplify the record-keeping and communication we need. A few systems you might consider are a tracking system for due dates, working files for your students, and communication systems for communicating with general education teachers and with paras. Calendar tracking systems are needed for remembering IEP due dates, three-year re-evaluation dates, 60-day timelines, and those school holidays or breaks that may impact getting your paperwork done on time. A tracking system can help you keep up with due dates that case managers need to know. It's important that you find a system that works for you. One example might be a calendar like this one, where you note all the important dates for the year. If you are a resource teacher, you may have more initial referrals, annual IEPs, and testing schedules for statewide assessments, but a teacher in an extended resource might have Medicaid building and coordination of multiple related service staff to consider. Another way you can track dates is by using a monthly system like this. This document is available on idahotc.com as a Word document that you can modify to fit your needs. Another example might be a monthly calendar. It's important to remember, though, that if you use a large desk blotter type calendar, it's essential that it isn't kept in a public place like a meeting room. Even though only initials are used, it still contains confidential information about our students. Listen to one way you might use backwards planning to help keep track of due dates. In the classroom, Part of being a special education teacher is managing your caseload. It's a really important part, and you have to spend time doing that. The first thing that I do with my MDT team at the beginning of every year is we sit down with a list of our kids, all of their three-year reevaluation dates and all of their IEP dates, and we sit down with a calendar and we plan backwards. So we start with our kid that's due in May, and we schedule that until we get to the beginning of the year, and then we have our calendar. Usually we schedule them a couple of weeks in advance, and usually I don't schedule any in May because I know that we're gonna have kids at the end of the year that, we, that are new kids coming in that we're trying to get tested and hold their meetings. So we leave ourselves a cushion there, but we make sure that we've got everybody scheduled and it works really well and you're not wondering, you're not late with your IEP dates and you're not late calling the parents and you know when you have to send that paperwork out. In the resources posted with this module, you will find an optional checklist that may be used to help you ensure important steps of the special education process are completed. Your district might have additional guidelines, such as sending home invitations 10 days in advance of meetings, for example, that may need to be documented within your tracking system. Let's listen to one way Stephanie schedules her staff to be in buildings for IEP meetings. An important part of case management is scheduling IEPs, and sometimes that's difficult when you have to schedule the psychologist and the speech pathologist and the, your principal. So one th thing that we do to make that easier is we have a day set aside each week specifically for our, for our IEPs, and that's Mondays. I can count on everybody on the team being here on Monday, and sometimes it doesn't work, so we're flexible. But I would say 90% of the time that, it, that we have our, all of our meetings on that day. When planning for instruction to address student goals, 
What is the appropriate group size the student needs for the skill to be remediated? And what settings does the IEP indicate the skills need to be taught? Sometimes student needs are best met in a large group or inclusive setting, such as a grade level classroom with typical age peers. Other times, individual small group or large group instruction to address goals is appropriate in a different setting, like a special education classroom. Locations or settings where children are served are decided in IEP team meetings, but first let's tackle grouping. Students may work in a group while working on individual goals. Many social skill goals, such as task completion or participation in class, are best taught and measured in group settings. A student with social skills goals may be in a group where other students are working on reading or math, for example. When figuring out how to put your students in groups that meet their individual needs, it's kind of like a 5,000-piece puzzle. Here are some guiding questions to help us think about group sizes. What group size best lends itself to learning the skill, provide practice, and generalize? Is the skill such that it needs to be taught individually, or is a group setting appropriate? How large of a group? Three to six students, or more than that? Answering these questions help teachers determine what classroom spaces are needed for learning in their classroom. In this chapter, we discussed staying organized in case management, and considerations when putting groups together. In the next chapter, we'll discuss scheduling and classroom management.